Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today I wanted to review the Asus M3A78-T ATX motherboard. This is part of my hardware reviews for building a performance gaming PC. The first thing that you're going to do is look for a motherboard that has all the features and support that you need, right? So this one has built-in graphics, GPU on it. It has features like booting into a Linux-based operating system. It has all kinds of neat little things that we're going to review. As soon as you look at the board though, you can see that there's three heat sinks. It's got capabilities for overclocking. It's got memory support that you need. All of this is crucial. Okay, so we're going to review this slowly. First things first, in the center of the board, you've got this heat sink, right? This has the integrated HD 3300 GPU under there, as well as the North Bridge is under there, the North Bridge 790GX chipset. Okay, so this, even though this board is called a, a 78-T, it's really using the 790GX uh, chipset. Look at the top though here, another heat sink, that one's for the voltage uh, regulators here at the top, right? Because if we're going to be overclocking this board, we need to make sure we have cooling. Look at these capacitors too, solid state, so you can tell this is quality. Okay, so you want to look for that when you get a board, right? You don't want to just get anything. You want to make sure that there's cooling and quality parts. Now, in the south bridge, you've got the 750 chipset right there. That one also has a heat sink. Not as big, right? Because we don't need to have a really big heat sink for that. But it's got the cooling on there as well. So these are the little things that you want to look for, right? Cooling. Now, the other thing here, starting from the bottom left corner, you can see the red plugs here. That is for your SATA. You've got an IDE plug there, you've got your fan plug here at the bottom, right? You've got your power main board plug, and you've got even more fan pl plugs at the bottom too. So you've got a lot of connectors here. Let's start and get a closer look here on this angle where there's this little connector, right? You can get this little kit that comes on the board and connect everything. Also, you've got your SATAs there, so you've got five uh, SATAs. And a, and a little LED there on top so it tells you when the board is on, for example. Uh, here on the side you've got some USB connectors, right? So you've got three of them over here. And um, right over here behind it actually is the um, uh, controller for the um, Firewire. So that's your Firewire 400, the 1394A uh, module there. Uh, moving along here you've got your Firewire plug, you've got the floppy plug, you've got your uh, audio a connector there for your optical drive and swinging the board around again here you can see here we got some PCI slots and very important that you got your X16 slots so we've got three of them and a 1X and two PCI slots right here right so you can actually have a uh, cross um, fire X going on here and you can also utilize the hybrid uh, crossfire uh, technology here on the other side we've got a couple more controllers for the uh, sound and the uh, LAN. So the sound is actually using HD 7.1. So that's eight channels right there. So that's pretty good. You've got a gigabit LAN connector, some more USB connectors, of course, and an eSATA and a Firewire plug. So this, this uh, input output port section here is packed with everything you'll need. Of course, you've got the standard VGA and uh, bonus here. You've got the uh, HDMI plug, optical audio, and a nice little combo, look at that combo PS2, if you still have a PS2 plug instead of the USBs that you can use for your keyboard and mouse, you've got one PS2 plug there that you can use for either a mouse or a keyboard. So that's that's your back um, panel there, so you can see all the connectors. So you want to look for a motherboard that has all of those features, because you never know how many you're going to need, you can never have enough really. right? So let's take a, a close uh, flyby here so you can get a nice uh, view of, of these components. So again, starting from the top here, you've got your uh, SATA connectors, then you've got these blue USB connectors, then that orange Firewire connector, then you've got the floppy black connector here, and your um, audio for your optical drive. Moving across the PCI slots here, we'll pass by the um, LAN, the gigabit, the input and output ports at the back, and of course the voltage regulator here. There's uh, your four pin power for the motherboard, and then going from the top here, you've got your 940 pin uh, AM2 Plus socket, right? Where I'll be installing my Phenom X4. And of course, there's the main uh, north bridge. And here is the south bridge. Uh, so, and then on this side here, you've got your IDE, 
You've got that little white three pin uh, connector for a fan. There your uh, main board connector, another fan connector. And of course, to finish it off, there's your memory support again, which I mentioned earlier. So you can have up to eight uh, gigs installed in there of your DDR2. So there it is. There's the M3A78-T, which I'll be using in, uh, in this uh, system that we're building and putting together. Next thing we're going to do here is flip this over so you can see the back, the plate here. So that way you can attach yourself a cooler for your CPU, right? So I'll be doing that. I'll be, I'll be uh, trying out three different coolers for this Phenom processor. Now look here at the kit. It's a basic kit, but it has all the necessities, right? The manual, the CD, you've got your plate and a couple of cables here and um, uh, some more drive cables. Looking at these specifically, let's start here with the uh, IO plate here. Uh, you want to make sure that whatever board you get has the uh, plate, right? You don't want to have a generic plate that might not match your, your board. So make sure whatever board you get has that. This one actually has some shielding, all right, which is good, right? We want to have proper grounding and protection and shielding. So um, that's nice to have here. So that, that's the uh, I.O. plate. The next thing that we have here are a couple of cables, like SATA cables. You can never have enough of these cables. So when you get a board, make sure that it comes with these SATA two connectors right for your new uh, SATA 2 drives and uh, adapter cables for power from for your SATA to uh, Molex type of power connectors you want to get those right uh, you don't want to have to go out and search for things like that this one has a little bonus called Q connectors which allow you to plug in all your case um, connectors to this little this little uh, module plug and that goes right into the uh, motherboard so that way for, for people that have big fingers or can't get in there very well this is a, a nice little time saver, makes it easy to connect the motherboard uh, to all those case plugs. Um, more, more cables here, right? More uh, SATA um, right angle cables, which are very nice to have these data, data cables and power cables that, uh, that they provided. So you can never have enough of these, right? So there's, um, there's some more of that. And of course, another power um, Molex to uh, SATA uh, power. So you never have enough of these guys so that's great so that's the basics uh, most boards come with these some come with even more than that right but uh, for the price point of this board you're getting you're getting a decent amount and of course let's not forget about the uh, regular IDE drives right because everybody might still have uh, IDE drives these days so we still have to have these uh, these cables floppies I don't know so much I don't use a floppy anymore so I mean if you still have a floppy drive fine here's your cable for a floppy drive so you can connect that to the board right so um, there you go that's the package right there so it's a pretty complete package I definitely recommend this for the price so it's definitely a, a keeper and uh, we're gonna be using this like I said to install the AMD Phantom X4 which I have and we're gonna review that next in my videos coming up so I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching